more tourists that are making their television in Japan. And even um, China, uh, they, they, make, they have a huge uh, GDP that has increased in the past 10 years, uh, about 10%. While that is like a positive, the, their factory output has increased, and that is making a negative effect on our environment because we're leaving all these harmful toxins in our environment. And so it has an actual cost too, negatively, because it's hurting our environment and our public health. Because China uh, is the world's largest source of carbon emissions and is responsible for a third of the planet's greenhouse gas output. It still also is home to 16 out of 20 most polluted cities. Uh, even the life expectancy recently has gone down 5.5 years because of air pollution alone. And on top of that, New York Times was writing about how movement of air pollution associated with the goods that China is producing um, for the American market has resulted in a decline air quality here in the United States. It's also not good. But it's also important to remember that it's not just China who's making us all this bad air quality, it's also us because Oil, we have been having a huge impact. Like in North Dakota, it is helping their economy because they used to have like a terrible economy, but then recently they have like a boom, and then um, it was put up to a break to have this population because of the boom is running off the dirty pollution. But then on the downside, um, in Toyota, North Dakota, they also have the records for the largest oil spill, which is not good for our environment. And so while it has like helped with their economy, still also damaging our environment. And then on an agricultural level, it's still not China that is damaging our environment. It's also us because um, the Humane Society wrote about how all of our factory farms in the United States is consuming thousands of animals, which are major culprits in climate change. So they're also working on these background of new birds. And so we need to regulate that better government. So you might be wondering. How do you get out this journey? Well, what we're doing recently is uh, that there have been a lot of job openings in environmental studies since 2012. The United States Bureau of Labor has talked about how that we have had more job openings since 2011. We are taking steps in the right direction. And the projected percent change of employment from 2011 to 2022 is expected to go 11% in this area. So this means the nation is beginning to put more of a focus on health and the environment. And I believe that all the new minds and ideas are beginning to be not just with each other, but every chance. And we can talk about this. Well, do you want me to escape and then go like to the thing so we can see it? Um, that is for forward. Um, Oh. Bam. Cool. All right, so what does this all mean for future generations? Uh, so I'm going to talk about how, um, how China will uh, ultimately decide if global warming will uh, increase within the future based on what they decide on um, environmental standards. So just to get a kind of perspective on how polluted China is, China produces 10 billion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere in a year and is predicted to be way over 15 billion um, by the year 2050. That is very, very, very bad. Um, and uh, what's really interesting is that a lot of um, countries have gone to either um, UN meetings or uh, other things uh, like that. And, and a lot of countries would talk to China about the environment and say, oh, you really need to uh, set down regulations because your pollution is really bad, it's going to really affect your citizens, it's really going to affect the entire world. And a lot of their excuses was like, oh, we can't really afford to um, to excavate in uh, environmental studies. But now, since it's officially, China is the number one economy in the world, so uh, they don't have uh, that, they don't have that excuse anymore. So you want to go slide? Okay, so coal. Um, Katie talked about coal earlier within the Industrial Revolution and how uh, China did not have coal, so it uh, had trouble um, uprising within the Industrial Revolution. But now they're trying to catch up, and literally 70% of China's energy comes 
and coal. And since China is such a huge producer, it needs to have a lot of coal. And the entire world usage of coal is 4 billion tons. And that's what China alone uses, 4 billion tons of coal, which is way too much. And that is probably the number one cause of the 10 billion uh, tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere every year. OK, so I'll talk about um, the future of energy demand. So um, on a lot of articles and websites and stuff, um, it is predicted that energy uh, demand will double or even triple by uh, the year 2050. And um, since uh, if China continues to use coal and other resources so irresponsibly, then their economy is basically going to uh, decline because um, we have scarce resources. And uh, in order to keep the environment in check and keep their economy in check, they really need to um, value the resources and uh, use scarcity methods within a business model. So, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so as I said before, um, China is officially the highest um, ranked economy, the number one producing uh, economy uh, in the world. So, and um, like I said earlier, they couldn't, they couldn't afford to regulate their, um, they said they couldn't, but now they can't. And uh, it's really no longer an excuse uh, within this day and age. The environment is not in good shape. Both the East and the West have been irresponsible. China put economic health in front of environmental health, while the U.S. has begun passing laws in order to preserve the land and the natural resources we have. China was late to act and just recently passed its first air quality law since the year 1989, effect January 1st, 2015. But this one law cannot stop the heavily metal contamination of the soil and rice produced near factories and mines or the recent finding that 85% of China's water from the six largest rivers have been contaminated to the point that the water is undrinkable even after filtration. Nor can this one law solve the fact that air pollution has gotten so bad there, it has been referred to as air apocalypse. In 2015, Beijing measured the pollution using a system called micrograms per cubic meter. While a healthy level of micrograms per cubic meter is 25, just last year, it was found that the MPCM reached over 800 micrograms per cubic meter. That's 775 micrograms per cubic meter above the healthy level. This level of air pollution was described, and I quote, as crazy high, not by the average citizens of Beijing, but the embassy staff there. The extreme level of pollution throughout China and the rest of the East has reduced the number of tourists that are willing to visit Beijing, the capital. This depreciation in income from travel has very negatively affected their economy. As we watch China's natural resources dwindle, their high usage of coal, their lessening amount of cropland, and the strain such large-scale production has put on their air quality, we do not believe that China is looking at their history to learn from. We predict that the lessening number of resources China has access to will slow production and allow the United States to become competitive in the economic again, the economic market again. As Katie mentioned earlier, the Industrial Revolution, the, the Industrial Revolution benefited the West because we had the coal, the natural resources required to power our factories. This allowed the West to exceed the East for the first time economically in history. Zach mentioned that China gets most of its energy from coal. What I don't understand is what they're going to do when coal becomes less readily available. Since they haven't looked into, an al into alternate solutions to power production, I believe that we will watch China deplete their environment without laws to regulate them, and by the year 2050, China's ability to industrialize will be used up. Their resources will be gone, and the United States economy will rise again. Because of the work we have done, and will continue to do to, to find new technologies that won't put such a strain on the environment, as a group, we believe that history repeats itself, and China is putting itself in the same position it was during the Industrial Revolution. This time, not by choice, but by luck. And not by luck, but by choice.